My name is Johan Brugård. Uh, I'm the CEO of Wolfram MathCore, and we develop System Modeler. Um, so this will be a um, talk where I will be displaying what has happened during uh, the last year, and basically uh, anything that has happened since uh, the last conference. So what I will, will uh, go through is some of you might not be uh, familiar with System Modeler since before, so we'll start with a very quick introduction of what System Modeler is. Then I will show so what was new, some of what was new in System Model 4.1, which came something around February. Then we have a couple of new model libraries related to, to System Model that I will talk about. And then we have an upcoming release in a few weeks of System Model 4.2, so I will include that too. And, and finally, I'll be wrap up, wrapping up by uh, giving uh, some kind of uh, uh, presentation of upcoming the upcoming presentations that we will have in the, in the upcoming days. Okay, so uh, let's start with what System Modeler is. Uh, those of you that have been to my talks before have seen this several times before. Those that haven't, perhaps ha haven't seen it before. But basically, System Modeler is uh, an, environment, an environment to build models of dynamic systems, and typically complex dynamic systems. Those systems could be something in aerospace, like a helicopter, which we will see examples of later on. Or it could be the human body. Or it could be um, something, let's say, a satellite. Or anything where you want to study how things are happening over time and want to understand more of it. So I will start by doing a very small example to give you an idea what you do. And I'll, it is a toy example. but. Uh, we will investigate, uh, we will try to model a squirrel and, that is shooting with a machine gun to try to rocket himself up above the Statue of Liberty. So what we have, um, and I will start by opening in the model in System Modeler. So what, what we will have is basically a model for the squirrel Getting there. Um, okay, we have a model for the squirrel up in the left hand corner. We have a mo model of the machine gun, a, a position sensor that uh, senses where, uh, how high the squirrel is at every point in time. And what you've done in, in System Modeler is you have a drag and drop environment to come connect these kind of components, and you create, can create your own components. Like in this case, we have created a squirrel component. If you go into the machine gun, we can see that that uh, is built up by other components. Some of them, uh, like uh, the shot counter here, is a standard component available in the library, while others are, in this case, we have a magazine of, of, of bullets, uh, which is something that we have developed here. And if I double click into that, I will have other components that that is built up by. So basically, it's a component-based environment to build up uh, any system that you want to study over time. So let's simulate this. And so based on this kind of drag and drop, we create a simulation executable. And we can study things like uh, clicking here, position sensor, and see the current height of our squirrel. So we can see here, when he has one bullet in the gun and he shoots, he will lift himself to about, this is in, in me meters, so hard for you to see, but it's about eight centimeters. Not very high, but kind of like this. Um, so then the question is, what happens if you have more guns or more bullets and that's the purpose kind of building a model. You can investigate different scenarios. So let's look at that from within Mathematica. And perhaps I will should zoom in a little bit here. OK, zoomed in quite a lot. So basically, we have a bunch of parameters here for, for different things, like the bullet mass. And why is that keeping, keep coming up? Uh, gun mass and so on. We set up parameters for what we want to study. Uh, and then we actually, in this case, we put a human on it. 
and we simulate. And in this case, we will simulate several different scenarios where we have a different number of guns, 1, 15, 32, and so on. And once we simulated that, we can look at the position of this human when he's, when he's shooting his gun. So we can see with one gun, he will propel himself like 0.3 millimeters, nothing. Uh, but with 80 guns, it will go up 12 meters, something like that. It's pretty high. Uh, but more interestingly, interestingly, we can see here that some of the, the behavior changes over time. For instance, I think this one is interesting. We can see that you will start propelling yourself, and then after a while, you will go downwards. Question is why? So that's the kind of things you want to, to find out by, by doing simulations. You, you find, OK, why is this happening? Now you have something to understand. And I won't explain that today, but you can find a blog that actually explains that and shows what's needed to fly over the Statue of Liberty and actually to fly up 155 meters as a human being shooting with some machine guns. AK-47s, if you want to try it yourself. So that was system model is all about. Typically, there are, are, the systems are cars or, or human bodies and things like that. But basically, you want to study the dynamics of it. So what's new with 4.1? 4.1 came around February, I think, perhaps March. Uh, had three main components into it. FMI, reliability, and model development. The latter was doing it easier to develop models, uh, several small things that are not perhaps that spectacular to show, but that for the user adds a lot of value because it makes a better working environment. FMI, on the other hand, is a very important thing because what that makes, it makes it possible to exchange your models with other tools and other softwares. So for instance, you would consider this example, and I won't be running it here live, where we have a controller developed by some third party. And in this case, they have actually developed it, don't tell it to anyone, in Simulink. But they have the controller in Simulink, and then they want to use a system where it can actually model the physical behavior of their vehicle better than they could do in Simulink. So what they can do then is export for Simulink this FMI. And then they can import the FMI into System Modeler and use that in the rest of the model, just as any other component in System Modeler. That makes it possible then to test the controller together with the model of the plant or the car in this case uh, and study that. So FMI allows you to, to combine with about 30, 40 different tools, um, importing and exporting your models and running that so you have an integrated tool chain where, where you can use it together with whatever you're using at the moment at your company or university. The other big thing there was reliability. And reliability uh, has been around in Mathematica for quite a bit. Uh, what we'll look at here is this system. We'll have a, let's uh, zoom out a bit. There you go. We have a, a system of a Cessna Conquest 441 with different uh, parts like flaps, electrical system, and so on. And what we want to look at are different scenario, failure scenarios. But before we do that, let's open the model in System Modeler. So here it is. And what we can see is that it's hard for you guys to see, but here it says reliability. We have a reliability tab uh, where you can set reliability expressions for your model. And in this case, we have the expression, a very simple expression, where it shows in, in, within all the reliability distributions that you have, all the distributions you have in Mathematica, we have chosen reliability distribution. And we said, OK, this reliability distribution depends on hydraulic power and flaps. What happens to be this and this component. So both these have to work in order for the whole system to work. Of course, the other system also have to work, but we have simplified this, this uh, for, for the sake of the example. I can then go in, for instance, to the flaps and click on the flaps, and I will see that the flaps have a dependency on a reliability distribution with all the pipes, pipe, basic pipe one, basic pipe two, and so on. And that's all of these. But also the valves and, and so on and so forth 
have to work. And you build up the expression for uh, what's needed in order for this system to work. So that is included. But of course, it still works to simulate as usual. So if I run a simulation of the model, um, I will first kind of compile the code. This is what, what's happening here. And once I can comp have compiled it, I can, I can plot the results, the dynamic behavior of the system. For instance, I create a new plot. I could plot the flap angle. Like that. Or and I can plot the commanded flap angle. So we can see a behavior here where we have a commanded flap angle in some kind of yellowish color. And the actual flap angle wants to connect me to the Wi-Fi here. Can I stop this from appearing in some way? I'm new to Mac, so I don't know how to use my own computer. Sorry? How do I do that? <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> so so uh, I'm completely new and I'm kind of not that good at using it yet. Uh, so you can see the delays it takes before it, it actually gets to the right position. There's actually some difference here in between them. So it doesn't get exactly to the desired position for some reason. That might be something to investigate. But anyways, so, so we can see that, but we, we can also, in this model there are included failures in our, or failure modes, so we can simulate that. And instead of simulating again, I will just show one of those failure modes uh, where we can see that what we have tried to do here is to set the flap angle, change that over time according to this red curve. But what we see is the only thing that happens is it pulls up to 10 degrees the flap and then it stays there. And the reason is that there's a short circuit modeled in the system right now. So the question, now we can see, okay, which kind of consequences does this have for our system? But what we want to know is also how likely is this to happen? So then you can have, for instance, every pipe here that I showed had reliability distribution. You can see that they, they are modeled, they can leak, they can have a restriction, or they can be completely blocked. And we can then look at what's... Um, uh, what's the reliability dis uh, uh, distribution for these systems? And we can see that the, the whole system, the full system in green here, is of course more likely to fail than the sub-components of it. And we can see how long time the, the, the ex expected time to failure is. But we can also look at things uh, uh, like um, this here, where we, where we look at uh, which, which parts are the most important for us to actually uh, try to influence to have the most structural importance for us. So we can see that the block switch uh, is, uh, has a structural importance much higher than, than leak switch and restricted switch. So probably it's more important for us to look at, at how we can limit that type of problem. Or we can look at the uh, entire system, comparing the flap system and hydraulic power system, and we can see that the, actually the hydraulic power system, as modeled right now, is more likely to uh, to have an influence on on uh, or, or ease ease of improvement. So this, combined with the simulations and, and actual understanding uh, how severe a problem is, is really important to be able to improve your system. So that was reliability. And there are other things in 4.1, but there is not that much time, so I will skip that. Uh, two new libraries, model plug, Arduinos, how many here have used Arduinos or know Arduinos? So like half of you know Arduinos. So Arduinos are these uh, simple boards uh, that you can buy uh, at a very low cost uh, and run stuff on it. So, so here we have a, a library where you can connect easily to those to create different labs. There is a lab right underneath here where you can go and try that. And tomorrow uh, before noon, there will be a specific session where you can go and try that. So I will not really show anything of that today. In instead, I will talk a little bit more about OPC Classic. OPC is basically using process industry for data, com uh, data communication, data ga gathering. Uh, and it's similar to, to model plug, but instead of connecting to Arduinos, we're con connecting to process industries. 
So we're con con connecting to a whole industry in order to, for instance, control it. Um, I couldn't bring a process industry with me. So if my network is working here, uh, let's see here, that's the wrong network. Let's connect to, where is it? Airwolf, is that the one we want? What password do we have? I was going I might actually have that tab open since before. So that's okay, let's skip that. I, I have it open since before. Okay. So basically, uh, what, what OPC does is, uh, and this is from, from our blog, it makes it possible to connect system model, model with the rest of your plant where, where different operating, sy or, or operating systems to the actual um, uh, control network um, and, uh, and uh, sensors and so on. And then you can use that, as in this example, to control a bioethanol production process. So this is from a lab, and then, then in this case it was done for a lab, but also done for a real bioethanol process. And you can use system model then to create models of the actual bioethanol production, and use that, for instance, for model predictive control. So it will look something like this, where you have uh, your model here, and then you connect to different uh, um, OPC uh, servers and, and clients to communicate with the process. And then you use that predictions by your model to understand how you should best govern uh, your bioethanol production in order to optimize production. So that's a very important uh, library if you are within process industry. Okay. So, um, then for two, it's very quick here short things about a lot of things. Performance, usability, integration. All of them are really good things. They're not always that easy to display because it's like a lot of small things. For instance, one of the things that we improved a lot is the performance for 4.2, the performance WCM plot, which has been rather slow sometimes. Uh, so this is for a bunch of ex test examples we have, and it compares the, the, the total time for uh, evaluating WSM plot for each example here, where one is uh, the same amount of time as it did in 4.1. So anything below one is faster than previously, which means that every single example we have in this test suite is, uh, is faster, and it should always actually be faster. And as long as, uh, and the more dynamic system you have, the faster it will be comparing to uh, previous results. But even more so, it will be more correct, more precise but it's pretty dull to look at these kind of graphs. Even if it's, of course, useful to know, it's, it's faster. So instead of looking at graphs, when looking at what has been become fa better with, on the compiler side, I will look at the scenario that has been made much easier to do now with the added performance. So we have here, uh, this has, has been done for a Swedish company that developed drones. They want to land autonomously with a drone on a ship out in the sea when it's high waves. I can't tell you how high, high waves they are, uh, should be able to cope with, but they have the system model. Uh, what we did there, we developed a system model model for them in order to test landing on all sorts of different sea conditions. And what you need to do is to run thousands and thousands of simulations to test landing after landing in order to secure that independent of, of kind of uh, the C condition you are at, this will work. So let's look at, at one of those scenarios. There you go. So um, here what we will see is, is the vessel, and this is not about having fancy graphics, so, so we have not cared anything about making fancy graphics, but we can see basically how uh, the water is moving relative to the vessel, and we are locked into the vessels or the ship, so we can't, that is not moving, but that's just because we chose to lock into it with our camera. And we can see the, the drone up there. So what we're doing is running simulation after simulation of different conditions here to see what happens now when this tries to soon, tries to, so let's just skip ahead a little bit, because I'm running a little bit late. Then, then you can see here that it tries to go down the land, perhaps it has already done its first attempt, 
uh, it go, goes up again because it failed for some reason, and then it will give a new attempt and it will be in, able to land. When we did this, uh, what happened was that we realized that the current control system and landing strategy would result in a lot of crashes if they would implement that in the real life. So by being able to run these all different scenarios of Cs, uh, they could improve the system and hopefully have something that is much more reliable at the end of the day. And that is uh, one of the things that is so much easier to do. The amount of simulations needed to do that is enormous. So getting improved for performance is crucial for that. So final example, uh, two examples. Integration with mathemat Mathematica is important, of course. So for instance, um, you can now create data models from Mathematica. So for instance, if I want to create some noise input, I'll, I'll tell, okay, create the model ca called noisy data with this function. And then I can connect that into a model like this. And now hopefully this, just before here, the, I'm running a beta version. And just before I came here, this did not run very well. So hopefully it does this time. Uh, seems to be slow for some reason here again. So I cheated. I was kind of expecting that. Uh, so I pre-evaluate this. And this will happen after a while. Uh, let's, uh, how do I interrupt in? Not like that. I can interrupt here, I guess. Evaluation. Uh, where do I interrupt on the, on the Mac? Uh, there. I hope. No. Uh, did that work? None of them? So uh, let's do this. Let's pre quickly quit it. Sorry for that. Uh, there you go, quit, and we'll go to next. So, so basically you have that, and there's, we have to look why that, that is running slow. Instead, I, I'll, I'll do the final example here on small usability things that have been added. So let me, uh, oh. oh, sorry. And that is like that, yeah. Back tick, I guess, there, no, there. There you go. So what I've done here instead, I, I create the data model uh, from Mathematica. I have a list. Let's say I've generated that in some way in Mathematica. I'm not showing the details of how I have, have, I've done that. It will create an, an input model for me here called robot input. And I'll go to Mathematica. File not found during input. So what's that? Let's uh, go here. Hopefully it is here. Uh, file didn't open it. Uh, open. I guess I have open reason somewhere, but uh, there you go. So now I have this model here uh, called writer, which is very simple. And I created my robot input. So I, what I'll do here is I'll drag my robot input. And one of the small, so there are many small things added in System Modeler to, to help you in your know, modeling. One of those is that for this robot input, if you go to the parameters, before to change matrices, you had this small part here where you had to kind of edit it. Now you have an editor for array editor for doing your, your editors of array. So this is what we generated from Mathematica. And we have a lot of like file editors, color pickers, and so on in order to uh, avoid using uh, code instead. So now I'll just connect this uh, quickly. Run the last example. There you go. And run this. And the example I will get will be uh, a small kind of robot arm, let's say, that will uh, get some movement according to the input data I gave it. So let's look at that. And if we look at this, this movement is now 
given but how we designed and, and does anybody see what it's doing? Kind of hard. So, so one of the small things we added and was that you can now trace a path. So if I, for instance, trace the tip of this, there you go, we can see what has happened here. Um, so if I write it here, uh, typing it instead, we can see that we will be writing WSL. So that is a very small thing, but it makes it much easier to understand what's going on, right? So there's a bunch of those kind of things done for usability to make it easier to understand what you're doing and to make it easier to actually do it. So um, if you want to see more, tomorrow we have open house where you can play around with different examples, uh, robots, uh, footballs, pongs, so on. Uh, we'll have a presentation on the Wolfram language uh, and how we will work with the cloud. That will be by Malte, who's back there. We'll have one on how to bring your engineering coursing, courses alive with System Modeler with Yuan back there. Uh, and that is on Thursday, right? And also on Thursday, you will learn how to model 10 helicopters at once. Uh, and that will show a little bit more advanced concepts of System Modeler and will be done by Marcus. So, uh, thank you very much.